or we have discussed that uh, the linear and non-linear dependency of the uh, log t value over the biological activity that is the lipophilicity value. So here we will approach the determination of the partition coefficient in another way that is we will utilize the chromatographic parameters. So why chromatographic parameters is very important rather than we can utilize in other sense the partition coefficient. The main reason is that in chromatographic parameters they have a number of advantages over the many other methods and the partition coefficient itself. What are the main advantages? The main advantages is that in case of chromatographic determination we need only a minute quantity of the analyte. We know that in case of partition coefficient we have required in case of uh, log determination of log p value by the, the traditional method of any octanol and water mixture we require a very large amount of analyte and it is not possible for in sometimes for the potent drugs we know that potent drugs are very minute quantities uh, they are present in very minute quantity and we do not want to lose any of that, that amount in our determination so uh, it is a great advantage over the traditional method of uh, uh, determination of log p value by the partition coefficient. So here we see that RN values are not direct application of the uh, retention factor. So what is a retention factor? It is actually a log value. Okay. So we are not directly employing that. And what are the other uh, important advantages? Are that RN values are not. Uh, they are not true equilibrium values. So if they are not true equilibrium parameters, they are not affecting the equilibrium parameters. So there is another advantage. What are the advantage is that the much quicker in time, it is very much quick. As we know that in case of chromatography, although it is now a very automated process, but still we require very less tedious process. It is very less tedious process, less consuming time uh, and it is much quicker in determination. So, other, another thing is that the impurities, although the substance have the impurities, they are have they do not have the major effect, major effect on the RF values. So uh, if they do not have the major values of uh, major impact on the RF values, so uh, the impurities doesn't matter. If impurities still there, it does not affect the RF values. So we know that what is RF values? RF values is uh, defined as it is a ratio of the distance travelled by the, uh, the uh, it is a distance travelled by the solvent and it is uh, divided by it is a distance travelled by the solute. Okay, and it, uh, it also involves the equilibrium that is established between the mobile phase and the stationary phase. Also, there is no specific quantitative instrument. There is no specific substituted instrument that is required for the quantitative uh, determination of by these methods and uh, it is also we know that TLC is basically a spot analysis so there uh, doesn't require any sophisticated machine to identify the spot, uh, spot localization because uh, in case of we know that in case of uh, uh, various polarity according to various polarities that spot localization the spot will rise okay it will decrease in the uh, increase in height Okay, so according to the different polarity, so uh, it does not require any uh, sophisticated quantitative instruments. Another facility is that RF values can be calculated for both very polar and non polar substances. Now, this is a method that is very limited in case of the partition coefficient determination by using traditional octanol water method because we cannot employ various type of uh, non polar and polar liquids. Here we have uh, eliminated out that restrictions. So it was first discovered in 1965 by Boyens and Milbro method who utilized reverse phase TLC process. In case of reverse phase uh, TLC process, we know that the stationary phase is non-polar, okay, and the mobile phase is polar in contrast to the traditional uh, normal phase uh, thing we are going to so, what is the method? The basic method is that the silica gel is impregnated with liquid paraffin or ethyl oleonate or in octanol, in octanol as the stationary phases. And these are non-polar in nature. The stationary phases, they are non-polar. And uh, it 
utilizes this method, the Boyles and Milgo first utilizes the reverse phase TLC method for this determination uh, for the quantitative and he has also derived the mathematical relationship between the RF values and RF values by uh, applying log. Okay, so RF corresponds to other uh, determinations also. We will understand that uh, we will in the later part of the lecture we will also study that uh, RN is also associated with the retention volume and also the refractive indexes, uh, indices. So, and the molar volume, the main is the molar volume. So, we will all uh, describe how we will determine the lipophilicity by uh, those parameters also. Now, there are very uh, disadvantages also associated with uh, these uh, the chromatographic parameters. What are the disadvantages uh, we will discuss? So, uh, what are the disadvantages associated with this chromatographic parameter determination method? One of the major disadvantages associated with the determination of uh, discophilicity by chromatographic parameter is that RF values, what we are, uh, we are talking about the retention factor, that it will solely very much tend to changes with the experimental conditions that we are performing the chromatographic experiments. As the RF values tend to change with the experimental condition, it is not suitable for the determination by the chromatographic technique. Because uh, we will get number of variabilities, right? So another one uh, and another uh, what are the disadvantages associated with that is that the RF values uh, are we have to employ a number of uh, different mobile phases and stationary phases and for each of that we will get different RF values. Now we do not have the mathematical calculations that we can combine the different RF values to a one uniformity. It is one of the major, one of the major disadvantages associated with the with this determination technique. Another determination uh, technique uh, that is uh, liable to disrupt the determination quantitatively of these substances are that the minute separations that is the minute separation of our RF values about RF values ranging from ranging from 0.2 to 0.8 is necessary for uh, the unique separation of that spot localization we have discussed, uh, discussed here the uh, spot localization right so that each individual spot localization requ uh, requires or it demands the separation of minimum 0.2 to 0.8 uh, that is uh, the RF factor need to be this much amount of further from each spot okay so it, we have to utilize different we have to utilize different mobile phases and different solvent systems to get that. So that is another problem. Another problem is that the, the solid molecules that we are determining here, solid molecules may ionize. So if it may ionize, it may, it may interact with different mobile systems or uh, it may interact with different stationary phases that we don't want actually. If we, uh, we tend to calculate the intact molecules, right? So we do not want that the molecules uh, rather they ionize or rather they form hydrogen bonding with some mobile phases or the, uh, the stationary phases. We do not require that. So that is another uh, problem that is associated with the, uh, these techniques. That means the solute that we are taking or the solute that we tend to determine should not ionize. Another quality is that that uh, TLC uh, uh, in case of Levile substances. What are the Levile substances? The Levile substances they are very much tend to broken down in applications of heat. So we do not want Levile substances because heat will degrade the substance, it will broke the substance and we will get a different set of values apart from we, what we should get from the original value. So these are the number of different uh, disadvantages associated that's why we have another different parameters that we are uh, discussing about the molar volume, okay? The molar refractive index value. So why we are discussing? Why we are discussing? Because it is we can. It is not an absolute method of identification of uh, the lipophilic property. In the next lecture, we will discuss about uh, 
uh, what are the other parameters apart from these chromatographic parameters that we will discuss. We will also discuss about the ortho effect. What is that is the how the presence of a substituent on a particular drug uh, is influencing the lipophilicity of the drug. Whether the di substituted, whether the uh, ortho substituted, ortho di substituted substance and the di substituted substance that are further apart have a different uh, lipophilic property. We will determine it. Other uh, and in other parameters, we will also discover about. We will also discuss about the um, molar volume. That is molar refractive index also, and we will also discuss uh, discuss about the paracord, and we will also discuss about the capacity factor. We will also discuss uh, discuss uh, various other methods of determining these uh, lipophilic parameters. And uh, we parameters. Apart from that, we have discussed, uh, discussed that what are the different uh, advantages and disadvantages of this process, and what are the advantages we will discuss uh, discuss in other parameters. Okay, in, in other methods, in other parameters. So, in the next lecture, we will discuss. Thank you.